we go, page 60. But hardly had he been given the globe a single spin. He hadn't even located Stonetown Harbor on it yet. So he's waiting for the other people to finish the um, maze. When he heard the bell clanging outside the stairway landing, it rang and rang very loudly and with no sign of stopping. And from this, he gathered it was Kate at the bell. Sure enough, within a few moments of the ringing had ceased and the pencil woman had laid, led Kate into the sitting room to join him. Kate was grinning ear to ear. The pencil woman had a hand to her forehead as if perhaps the bell ringing had given her a headache. She doesn't have to go through a second time, Renee asked, surprised. No point, said the pencil woman and left them there alone. What do you mean a second time, uh -huh. Kate asked. I had to finish it twice to prove I'd solved it, but you just got through so fast, I suppose it would be hard to do it any faster. Not as long as I have my bucket with me, Kate agreed. After turning this over in his mind a few times, Renee gave up and said, okay, what did your bucket have to do with getting through that maze? Well, of course, I saw right away that I was in a maze and I knew that I had to get to the opposite side of the house, so I looked around for a heating vent. A heating vent. Sure, and there in the floor of the very first room I saw one, so I got out my army knife screwdriver and rem removed the grate and squeezed down into the heating duct. It was a tight fit, I'll tell you. I had to tie my bucket to my foot and pull it along behind me. Those old ducts run all over the house, but the central duct runs more or less in a straight line to the back. So with my flashlight in one hand and my army knife in the other, I just followed it all the way there pried up the vent and popped out by the staircase. I sort of had to bend the grate on the last one. I think maybe old yellow suit's mad about it. I bet she'll forgive you. Don't you think? It's not like it'll be hard to fix. Only a little one by one grate. Hey, this is an impressive globe. For a while, the two of them entertained themselves finding places on the globe, but eventually they'd had enough of it and Sticky Washington had yet to appear. Kate went over to the piano and tried to play it. The keys made no sound. Together, they lifted the lid and looked inside. The piano strings had been removed, and in their place were more books. Those people certainly have a lot of reading to do, Kate observed. Oh, well, no great loss. I only know chopsticks anyway. That one, that's chopsticks. Okay, almost 20 minutes had passed, and still no sign of Sticky. Kate began to sort through the items in her bucket making sure each one was in its proper place. She had found an arrangement that kept her things secure and within easy reach, and she was very particular about it. She was the sort of person who liked to be constantly busy. Renee realized she hadn't much use for idleness, which reminded him of something he wanted to ask her. You know, Kate, something's been nagging me. You told us you carry all these things around in your bucket because they're useful, right? Absolutely, Kate replied. Then why the kaleidoscope? It's, an in it's interesting to look through, maybe, but how is it useful? Kate stopped double-checking the things in her bucket and gave Renee a searching, scathing look. At last, she nodded. You know, I think I can trust you. I can already tell. All right, here's the secret. She took out this kale kaleidoscope, popped off its colorful prismatic lens. Only then did Renee see that the prismatic lens had been concealing a different lens beneath. The kaleidoscope is a spyglass in disguise, Kate explained. It's a good spyglass, and I wouldn't want anyone to steal it. The kaleidoscope, on the other hand, is a rather bad kaleidoscope. I don't think it would tempt anyone. The very idea of disguising a good spyglass as a bad kaleidoscope made Renee laugh with pleasure. It's terrific, he cried. Kate wasn't sure what Renee was laughing about, but she was eminently Im agreeable. And before long, she was laughing with him. When Renee had taken a good look at the spyglass, Kate tucked it away again and flopped onto the sofa. Do you think Sticky's ever going to finish? I'm having a fine time and all, but I'm about to drop dead from hunger. In answer to her question, the bell rang. Only once, and almost imperceptibly, as if Sticky had just tapped it with his fingernail. Through the closed door, they heard the pencil woman speaking in her very brisk way. Then... An embarrassed murmur that must have been Sticky's response. After a moment, it was silent again. 
Again they waited. Shouldn't be long now, Rene said. It's an easy one once you've figured out the secret. It only took me three minutes the second time through. Three minutes soon passed, however, then four, then five. Not until almost 15 minutes had gone by did the bell ring again, just as softly as before. A moment later, the door opened and Sticky entered the room with the pencil woman behind him. He gave a great smile when Renee and Kate, when he saw Renee and Kate, not so much because he'd finished the test, but because he was relieved to have company again. Congratulations, said the pencil woman, you all pass. The children cheered and clapped each other on the backs, and when they were done cheering and clapping, they realized the pencil woman had left them again. She's awfully fond of leaving, isn't she? asked Kate. I never saw anybody who left so much. I suppose she expects us to wait again? Maybe Rhonda's coming for us, Renee said. I hope so, otherwise I'm going to have to eat some of these books. Sticky, what on earth took you so long? Don't you know how hungry I was? Sticky seemed about to cry. He was reaching for his spectacles when he saw Kate was only teasing him. Then he smiled and shrugged. I had to go through it twice. So did Renee, but he said there's some kind of secret that gets you through faster. Why did it take you so long the second time? It was a little faster, Sticky protested. Now, what's the secret you're talking about? The secret to getting through the maze, Renee said. You know, the arrows? Arrows? You mean the ones on those panels? Renee gave Kate a look of amazement, but Kate replied, Don't look at me. I don't know anything about the arrows, remember? I took a shortcut. Uh, that's true, he said. Sticky, if you didn't use the arrows, how did you get through? Sticky shuffled his feet and said, I just kept trying one door after the other until finally I found the staircase. It was sheer luck. And you found it more quickly the second time? That's the really lucky part, I guess. No, no, that part was easy, Sticky said. I just remembered how I got through the first time. First I took a right, then a left, then a straight ahead, then right, then right again, then left, then left again, then right, then straight ahead, and so on until I came to the staircase. I didn't have to waste time searching in my head, scratching my head over those panels, or worrying whether they were going to turn the lights off or any of that stuff. I just hurried through exactly as I did before. Exactly as Kate began, but then just shook her head. That's incredible. Renee laughed. You did it the hard way, Sticky. What's the easy way? Follow the wiggly arrows. Oh, Sticky said thoughtfully. That would have been useful to know. All right, boom. That's it, guys.